All right, Warren J. Cantrell here for Scene Stealers at the Seattle International Film Festival. And we have a wonderful opportunity today. The uh, star and director of one of the films, actually the film that closed the festival this year, Grass Roots, is here to speak with me a bit today. And uh, Mr. Jason Biggs and Mr. Stephen Gyllenhaal. I want to thank you both for being here today. You're the director? I'm the director. Yeah, I'm the star? No, I'm the star and the director. <laughs> Sorry, director. Jason yeah, Biggs yeah. is the, is I'm the star. I'm just hanging on. Oh, You're I'm my friend. friend. I'm a friend. Okay. You're my friend. <laughs> So uh, I was just going to ask you a few questions about Grassroots. Go right and, ahead. Um, it, it seems that the, uh, it's obviously a political film. Political, the, yeah. The, uh, political comedy. Political comedy. Yes, okay. The, <laughs> the established sort of narrative for uh, a political film is somewhat set as far as the idealistic underdog taking on the established incumbent. Uh, when you guys were in pre-production and, and sort of mapping out your characters, how did you feel you were going to sort of carve out your own unique niche in, within that genre? Well, I think it didn't hurt to be in Seattle. To begin with, I mean, it's a, a, a wonderfully quirky, beautiful, complicated city, and I think just by by being in this in the city and shooting in locations like the Rebar, and, and we turned the Comet Tavern into a, a coffee shop, and and just generally taking on um, and it, it sort of engaging the patina of Seattle, which is patina because it's raining. Yeah. Um, a, a lot. You, you you get a different, and the whole grunge music is sort of built into all of that. You you start out talking about a slightly different kind of underdogs yeah. um, than you would in, in pretty much any other place. So that was, I think, a really important element in all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it felt, then, and I, I picked up on that because it felt like Seattle was itself uh, the sort of the third main character, yeah. along with Mr. Biggs and, and Mr. Moore. Did you feel that, um, as you were talking about before, there were certain characteristics that uh, Seattle brought to the fore. Uh, you had mentioned grunge a little bit, but certain Seattle-specific characteristics that really brought the, the film to life or the, the story to life. I think there's a rebelliousness that exists in Seattle. I think um, there's always been a sort of anti-establishment quality about it, a thinking outside the box. I mean, even the corporations here think outside the box, but then there are all the people that don't work for the corporations and they think even more outside the box goes back to the beginning of Seattle, the history of Seattle, the frontier kind of um, spirit that, that really brought this city in, in, into life. In some ways, it's, it's on the west coast, it's on the northern edge, it still has that feel almost yeah. more than any other city. The wilderness surrounds it in a beautiful, beautiful way and informs all of it. So I think all of that um, helped to sort of incubate um, a kind of grassroots sensibility that I, I felt we were looking for and we did I, I think hopefully really capture and in the process kind of created a love a love letter to, to Seattle because mm. I did fall in love with Seattle. Oh, so that's really nice. Uh, I, I was gonna ask you Jason about uh, your character Phil Campbell. In, in the the traditional sort of political narrative um, it, it seems as if your character isn't necessarily the, the front and center guy. It's usually the, the underdog candidate. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that you were drawn more on the, the historical counterpart, Phil, or did you find that you were trying to make sort of your own character with its own voice? <clears throat> um, well, I was, I was drawn to the real Phil, you know, in reading his, his book, which this is uh, loosely based on. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about real characters and this is a real story. Uh, I was absolutely intrigued by, by Phil and what he had done and, and, and particularly that relationship that Phil and Grant mm -hmm. had because even in the book it's, 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 it's clear that there is something unique in their relationship and their friendship and then Stephen you know really informed everything from there for me I mean it, it, it's um, you know the script is uh, you know it's it, well, it was fantastic. I mean, I, what I loved about it, among many things, uh, is that sort of, um, you know, that sort of, that underdog kind of David versus Goliath kind of thing that's going on. I, I love that when we meet Phil in the beginning of the movie, he's in a place where he really has, uh, he's just kind of lost. And emotionally, he's, he's just all over the map. He's not in a great place, and and he's he's without direction. He's and been fired. He's been told he's been fired <laughs> he's from the finished. stranger, um, which there's a wonderful joke. Uh, he's, he says, I've, "I've been fired from the stranger." I mean, can't can't fired from the stranger. I can't can't get any worse than that. <laughs> and um, but it, it's it's it takes this 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 
you know, tornado of a, of a person, uh, Grant Cogswell, played perfectly by the tornado that is Joel <laughs> David Moore, to come in and, and almost coerce him. But, but you know, he, he goes sort of, he kind of just goes along for the ride initially. He, he's kind of a, you know, he, he's, he's willing, but he's, he's reluctant. Um, if only because he doesn't have anything else to do. But there's something about him that is, is intrigued by the whole thing. And then eventually, you know, what I loved about Phil is you see him get more and more, you know, Grant's passion rubs off, but also he starts to um, adopt these, you know, the, these ideas as his own. He starts to really believe mm-hmm. in, in the cause and in this, in, in fighting for something on a grassroots level. And it's, it, um, I just really liked that there was that very clear journey and their friendship w- had its own journey. So that was, that was the biggest thing for me. It, That's the short answer. If you would like, I can, <laughs> give, you well, I no, can it, give you the long can answer. Can I say one thing also that, that to, to, to shorten even more his short answer? Um, <laughs> that, that I think Phil is cynical in the beginning. Very, mm-hmm. very cynical. And, and cynicism is a very interesting form of energy, actually. It, 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 is, it is energy, and I think in 2012, I would say if you turned and talked with most people, they'd say, I'm cynical. Mm-hmm. 2008, I was hopeful, and now it just is, I feel betrayed. I certainly felt betrayed, so I'm now cynical. Mm-hmm. But cynicism, which is the core of your character, I think, mm-hmm. is really a, underneath it, there's buried hope, and there's, because it's, it's been dashed. And so what happens in the piece as he goes through the minutia of actually having to run a campaign and really take it seriously, the hope returns. And I think one of the things about the film, done through laughter, I mean this is a comedy, and one has to laugh at this 2012 election in some ways, but also what it's trying to do is really engage its audience, engage first Seattle, then Portland, then New York, and hopefully go across the country Mm -hmm. to get involved. you know, play around with this. This is this is your government. This is don't be terrified by the super PACs and don't be intimidated by these people with their, their you know the hair you know backlit and combed and all that. <laughs> they don't know any more than anyone else knows, you know? Yeah. I think that's really in a way what Phil comes to understand is that cynicism cynicism melts away. And it's fun, you know, watching we were at SIF last night, people coming out of the theater they were smiling. They were happy. I mean, the movie makes you happy. I haven't made a lot. I've made some dark movies in my head. <laughs> you know, this is a movie that makes you happy, which is so great about comedy, really. Yeah, and it doesn't have the same feeling as Homegrown at the end. Of yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's an interesting thing that, that you had mentioned as, as far as the challenges your character had to face, because when I was watching the movie, it seemed somewhat striking to me that you know, the Phil character had to sort of juggle this dual responsibility of constantly toning Grant's message down and sort of calming him down while still selling his candidate. It, uh, it, it seemed like a very hard thing for the, the real feel, Phil to have juggled. Did you find as you were trying to develop the character that you were kind of battling back and forth between wanting to, to like this guy, but at the same time sort of acting as the voice of, of reality? Of reason. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure, that was one of the many challenges. I mean, for me, the it, it, yes, I mean, that was definitely tricky to sort of balance that but that was also part of the fun I think and also and also between Steven's direction and Joel's performance I found it it, that that was I I just kind of instinctively I think knew where the right moments were to um, you know play just just um, confused by this guy, try to be, try to calm him down, try to, and that's, you know, that's with Stephen watching over us and, and Joel's, you know, crazy performance, it, it, um, I felt like it was less difficult to find those places where I was supposed to sort of, you know, go one way or the other. For me, the biggest challenge was just um, the subtleties of, of the performance. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that Stephen shot of of me that is without dialogue, and um, it's it's very internal. It's very introspective, and and um, you know, for me, this is stuff that I don't do with much frequency, and and my instincts, um, maybe just because of its its habit and just what I'm used to, are always to go bigger. Yes. <laughs> so, 
you know, so... Jason Biggs, go bigger. Yeah, it's all part of it, so... Well, and I know you come from a theater background, where you're kind of, you're acting for the back row. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's definitely... I yeah, think. between theater and broad comedy, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, there's, there's, there's habits that are now ingrained after many years. And but it's all in there. I mean, he's a spectacular actor. I think what's, what's wonderful about Grassroots is to see Jason go into areas that I think you've been in a little bit before, but Just really hasn't consistently. I mean, it's like, yeah. and I was saying the other day that it was, was it Brad Pitt? No, 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 it was, um, it was, um, uh, I think Brad, was that Brad Pitt was mentioned? I think he mentioned Brad Pitt. And, 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 but that was more about looks. I and that was, that was right. And then we, we were, Johnny Depp, we talked about Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. Johnny Depp. Because of my, uh, my humor, humor, humor and, and humor sexy, and sexiness sexy. and uh, bank account. Bank account. Yep. <laughs> that's, you really, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. unshakable. But personal. honestly, what yeah. I had said was Jimmy Stewart. That I actually felt that there is a Jimmy Stewart quality about Jason that was what I was going for with this character, which is a sense of decency. Mm-hmm. And decency actually does bring out cynicism when it's defeated. And then what, what I'd like to do, and comedy can do that, is break up the cynicism. Stop being cynical, people. Stop it. This is a tough, you know, politics, living in the real world. It's a contact sport. It's tough. You know, grow up. You know, stop being cynical. Throw yourself into this process. The 2012 election is a critical election. So here we are coming up with grassroots, spotlighting grassroots candidates. Did I already say, I don't know if I have, we talked so many times with so many people, <laughs> that we're going to have grassroots get. candidates after every showing of the film ah. in the theater get up and talk for five to ten minutes after the screening, after the showing of the film, and then we'll take them off to, where else would you take them in Seattle, but to a coffee shop. <laughs> and they'll continue with the audience to talk about politics, grassroots politics, mm-hmm. and people getting involved. Because it's fun. Yeah. And, you, and you stop feeling cynical. And you jump in, and that's really what happens and is exhilarating with this character as you're watching you know, the modern Jimmy Stewart mm-hmm. start out cynical and become, you know, I'm, I'm going for it. Like this. I, I, the contemporary version of Mr. Smith goes to Washington mm-hmm. in some ways. Ooh. I take that when you, and wonderful, um, it's a wonderful life, and what else? Um, milk, I'd say, and uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love your line there, in there, by the way. Decency brings out cynicism when it's defeated. It's so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you shoot for, you just like, it's, you just... If you know you want things to be right, you're looking for you know you're a decent person. You're looking for decency in the world, and when that is shot down, you're like, how could decency be shot down? How yeah. and why does why does that happen? And then inevitably the you know the cynicism follows. Yeah. It's true. Well, no, and I think it's something that uh, the, the film does tackle, and um, it, it's a breath of fresh air, I think, for any sort of political film, especially a political comedy, which I think. It is. I think it does sort of juggle that uh, the juxtaposition between sort of the madness of politics and the fact that it is a real thing. There's, yeah. you know, it's mm-hmm. black and white in a lot of cases. So uh, I wanted to thank you both for, for spending a little bit of time speaking with me. It was well, sure. wonderful thank you. seeing your film, and uh, I hope a lot of more people get a chance to see yes, it. Yes, a lot of people. Yeah. Next month, I believe it comes out in limited release, July it's 20th. July 22nd. July 22nd. June. 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 This June. Two weeks. No, 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 no. Ah, okay. Okay. Kind of June. 27, oh, we get that. Oh, God, I'm here. Yes, Jeez. my God, I would just see you. I would just, whatever he said. Man, oh, man. Does he, I got to do everything? Yeah. I got to do fucking everything for this movie. Don't get cynical. Don't yeah. get cynical. Yeah, don't it's get unbelievable. Well, anyway, I appreciate it so much. Nice Thank to you see you. June 22nd. June 22nd. <laughs> June 22nd. <laughs> All right.